Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt and today we're going to be building a keyser from start to finish. This video, I will be explaining how to build a very simple keyser design that anyone can do. Also, I'll be going into how to install taps, kegs, and manifolds as well. By the end of the video, you should know how to build a keyser and how to connect taps. Also, what tools and equipment you'll need. Let's first talk about what tools you'll need to get started on this project. To start off the list, you'll need something to cut with. A miter saw is preferred, but a hand saw will work just fine. You'll also need a drill and a screwdriver, preferably one that you can swap bits on, a razor blade and measuring tape, HVAC tape, styrofoam insulation, I believe this is one inch thick, 7 8 inch spade bit, foam board construction adhesive, a waterproof outdoor indoor silicone caulk. I'm using window caulk. A chest freezer. The size will depend on how many taps you want. Five cubic feet will fit two to three kegs, while seven cubic feet will fit around three to four kegs. I'm using a seven cubic feet insignia chest freezer. You'll also need some wood screws. I'd say minimum length of two inches. Some drill attachments to pre-drill screw holes. 2x6 boards, you can also use 2x10s or 2x12s if you want a larger collar. Uh, if you want to use a drip tray, you'll need to use a larger collar unless your drip tray is magnetized. A pencil. You may also need some wood, a small wood screws around half inch to one inch in length. This is optional. A fan is recommended to circulate the air in the freezer, but not required. Now to get into building the keyser. We first want to take a pencil and mark the corners of the of where the lid padding rests on the top of the freezer. Mark all
screw the wood screws to the collar to hold the lid in place. Once the lid is attached, test the door and make sure the screws are holding onto the door and seating properly. At this point, the keys are built is complete. Now we just need to add the kegging equipment. Now to go over the equipment, you'll need to set up the kegging equipment. All links are in the description. You'll need a CO2 tank and a regulator and attach them together. Sing a single output or double output on a regulator is fine since we'll be using a manifold anyway. Also, if you're ordering CO2 tank online, they always come empty. You'll need to swap these for a full tank similar to propane. Here's a pro tip. Make sure to go to your local welding shop. CO2 is much cheaper to swap there. You will also need a manifold and CO2 connectors for your keg style. You'll also need plenty of liquid and gas line for this build. Connect the manifold to the regulator and then some lines to the manifold for the amount of kegs you're going to want to use. This is how your CO2 line connection should be when you're complete. You can ignore the clear line that is going from my regulator. That's for my bottling wand. Try to cut the lines to the amount that you'll need so you don't have a ton of excess line in the freezer. Now to set up the liquid line, you'll need some beer tap shanks to attach the taps to the keyser. I believe the ones I have are 4 inches, but you just need them long enough to go through the wood collar. You'll also need some taps. Um, I like to use the perlic taps, so I went with these. Next, push the shanks into the holes that you drilled out with the spade bit. They should be a snug, but not difficult to get in. Then tighten the shank onto the collar with the bolt the shank came with. Lastly, you'll need to set up your beer lines. They should only be around 3 feet in length each. One side should be cut straight and then the other side should attach the liquid out connector for your keg style. You'll also need a tap wrench. This is to secure your taps onto the shanks. Hand tighten the, the taps onto the shanks, then use your tap wrench to tighten the taps onto the shanks. On the other side, just push the lines onto the shanks. This is easiest if you heat up the ends of the lines with hot water and then push them onto a, with a circular motion. You'll also notice that I screwed uh, in the manifold and the collar. You can mount this anywhere or just set it somewhere in the freezer. Next, we've got to worry about temp temperature control. Uh, get an ink bird. This will monitor the temperature with a probe, and when the temp gets too high, this will kick the freezer on. I went ahead and screwed the ink bird to the outside of the collar and then plugged in the freezer to the cold port on the ink bird and then draped the probe into the freezer. I keep my ink bird configured to around 38 degrees. At this point, this is what it should all look like. The only thing that is missing are the kegs. Next, I filled a keg up with star sand and connected the liquid and gas line to the keg. Now I want to sanitize the shank, the beer line, and the taps. Pressurize the keg with a little bit of CO2 so we can push the star sand through both beer lines. Uh, you can leave the star sand in the liquid lines. It's not going to hurt anything once we're all done. Then we can open up both taps at a time and push the star sand out through the liquid line, shanks, and tap. Once both taps are sanitized, you can put the beer into the keg, pressurize it, and connect the lines. After you're done carbonating the beer, you can open up the tap and push the remaining star sand out of the line. So that really concludes the video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is the finished product behind me. Uh, I know it looks a little odd because the taps are in the back, but like I mentioned in the middle of the video, this is gonna go in a closet where I'm gonna run the taps right through the drywall. Uh, another thing too is the wood collar I made uh, is pretty much like bare minimum effort. I didn't sand it. I didn't like clean the corners off. Uh, I didn't hide the screws. You can also stain it. You know, there's a lot of stuff to make this a little bit more presentable, but for my purposes, again, this is just going into a closet, so I don't really care what the collar looks like at all. It's not really gonna matter. Uh, but this is, you can just use this guide as, you know, you can build it just like I did, a simple build, or you can use this as a reference and then build onto it or use nicer wood or sand it or stain it or however you wanna do it. Um, you can just use this guide as a reference. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.